first reading, we hear the account of creation as narrated in the beginning of the book of Genesis. The account makes clear, among other things, that God alone is the creator of everything that exists outside of himself, while, of course, he is uncreated. So the question, who created God? The answer, no one. He's uncreated. That's part of what it means to be God. Genesis also tells us that God gave a beginning to the sensible material world, so matter and the visible world is not eternal. It had a beginning. And also, following the logic, Genesis 1 teaches that everything that exists depend, depends upon the one who gave it being, meaning that every created thing depends on God. Also, we see here that the created world is good. And why is that? Well, because its author is goodness itself. There's goodness in the effect, in this case, in creation, because there's goodness in the first cause, who is God. And after each element of the universe or of the world comes into being, what, what do we read? Seven times Genesis chapter 1 says that God looked on what he created and, quote, saw that it was good, unquote. Interestingly, the ancient philosopher, Greek philosopher Plato, the founder of Western philosophy, perhaps the greatest philosopher to have ever lived, in Plato's world of the ideas called the Iper Uranio in Greek, he said that the greatest or the supreme idea was the idea of the good, he said. He said that the good is the unconditioned principle of everything, source of all truth, and of all the being, of all the other ideas, he said. And for Plato, the ideas were real entities. They weren't just concepts in our minds. So in Plato's idea of the good, also called by him the one, uh, there's a reflection of the true God who is good and who creates all things good and who creates out of sheer goodness, actually. Although Plato's idea of the good wasn't a personal God, so he did err in that respect. Another thing we note from Genesis chapter 1 is that God moves from disorder to order. What do we mean by that? Well, in verse 2 it said today that when God created, he said, said the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss. So that means that there's a certain disorder as things begin. But by the time we reach the end of Genesis 1, the earth is well-ordered, and man who's going to tend the earth is already on the scene. So God moves from disorder to order. In Greek, disorder is chaos, or chaos as we say. The word for order in Greek is a word that's familiar to all of us. It's cosmos. They spell it with a K. We spell it with a C. So cosmos is order. In the creation account, God also moves from the general to the specific and from the less perfect to the more perfect. The general is stated in verse 1 when it said that God created the heavens and the earth. And the specific comes when God creates the individual, when he creates man and woman in Genesis in verses 26 and 27, from for whom? God creates everything. Everything was created for that individual, the individuals, Adam and Eve. Human beings are the highest level of perfection in the created material order. Why is that? Because we're the only ones created in God's image and his likeness, in the image and likeness of the creator. So that means, as we've often noted, that you're very valuable and very important in God's eyes. And God really wants us to take that to heart, too. And that truth should make us more humble and grateful, not, not proud and arrogant. We also need to remember that God freely chose to create. He wasn't lacking anything so that he had to create us, and he didn't gain anything by creating us either, because God can't gain or lose anything. He's infinitely perfect. And to freely choose to do what is good, as God did when he created everything, to freely choose to do the good is always an act of love, and it's a choice of the will. So how can some of these insights apply to our own lives? Well, in our spiritual lives, God 
usually moves from disorder to order, meaning that with his grace, we move from vice and sin to virtue. And in that sense, we move from being less perfect to being more perfect. And we remember always that perfection in God's eyes is not never making mistakes, as we say quite often. Expect to make mistakes uh, and don't beat yourself up about them. Uh, perfection for us is essentially being found in being charitable and in being merciful. As we read, for example, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, and in Luke chapter 6, verse 36. And in the context there, he's always talking, our Lord is talking about charity. God also moves from the general to the specific in our lives, too. The general is the call to holiness, the call to be like God, as it were, and that's a call for each and every one of us. The specific comes in how we concretely live out that call, either in the married state or as religious or as a priest or even as a single person. It's important to note also that whenever we ourselves choose to do good, we actually participate in God's creative power, if you think about it. So we are created good, which means that ontologically, meaning according to our being, man is good, but it's the choice of our will that determines whether we are morally good or morally evil. We mentioned Plato a moment ago. Uh, for the most part, the ancient Greek philosophers believed that the only real evil in man was what? Was ignorance, they said. So once someone came to know the truth, they said that they would automatically choose it. That's how the Greeks thought. That's false. It's called, uh, it's known as Socratic intellectualism, and it's still around to this day in our culture. For our part, the Franciscan School of Theology teaches that the highest faculty of our soul is the will, not the intellect. Why? Because it's with my will that I either embrace the truth or I reject, reject it. And frankly, that's the difference between heaven and hell, right? When the angels came to announce the birth of our Savior to the shepherds, they said in Luke, 2 verse 14 they said glory to God in the highest and on earth men uh, peace to men of good will is how the Vulgate translated it and that's also what we recite during the Gloria at the Mass peace to men of good will they didn't say peace to men of good intellect that even sounds strange if you think about it uh, our intellect presents to us the truth but the will has to say yes to the truth and whenever we do that, again, whenever we choose to do what is good, we are participating in God's creative power. So returning to our creation reflection, when we sin or do something that we shouldn't do, we act as a destructive power in the universe. We make the cosmos more chaotic, you could say. Even uncharitable thoughts make the world more chaotic. They foster darkness rather than light. Remember in Genesis 1, verses 3 and 4, it says that God looked at both the light and the darkness, and he said that the light was good, not the darkness. So we don't want to foster darkness. Jesus also said, if the light inside of you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Mark, Matthew 6, verse 23. So sin is like a darkness that destroys. On the other hand, whenever we do good, we foster order and harmony within ourselves and also within the world as well. And we also reflect the character of our good creator. So goodness needs to begin inside of us, not outside of us. And if we want to expand on what we've already said, we can say that goodness begins with charity and with a spirit of mercy in our thoughts. Mercy and charity towards others and even towards ourselves, for that matter, because God himself is merciful towards us. So every act of good is a participation in God's creative power, and every act of good done when we're in a state of grace and done for the right intention is a participation in the sanctifying power of God as well. It's quite amazing if you think about it, and even more wonderful when we live according to that truth. So. 
Let's ask Our Lady for the grace to embrace God's truth and his goodness and to be able to spread and share the truth and the goodness and that goodness with others so that more people will come to know and to love our good God who is the creator of heaven and earth. Praise be Jesus and Mary.